It's Minecraft 115 and it is the B update. I'm gonna give you a really easy honey bottle and honeycomb farm that you can knock together in minutes and will work fully automatically for you. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Amamats, in my farm tutorial series. It's 1.15, so the bees are here, and we want loads of honey blocks, which means we want loads of honey bottles. We also want loads of honeycomb. I'm going to show you a really simple way to farm these things up. Don't you go anywhere. To make this farm, you are going to need 76 oak logs, two stacks of glass, about 34 stairs, four ladders, two trapdoors, one minecart with hopper, a couple of beehives or a couple of bees nests, depending on how you've collected them, four blocks of redstone, two observers, about eight oak planks I've used as a structural block, doesn't have to be oak plank, two dispensers, one redstone repeater, I don't know why I've got two there, three redstone dust, a few bits of scaffolding just to help you clamber up, two fences, two chests, 10 powered rails, 40 normal rails, two levers, one door, about 40 blocks of dirt, three hoppers, between 15 and 20 flowers. Make sure there's at least a few dandelions in there. A load of glass bottles, I'd recommend a number of stacks and a number of shears as well. Now there are a number of ways in which you can get your bees into your farm, but one of the ways is to hold a dandelion in your hand. They all of a sudden become very interested in you, so cute and they will follow you around because they like the dandelions. However, if you're a long way from where you wanna get your farm going, this is gonna take a long time and you do risk the bees getting slightly disinterested in you and stopping following you halfway up a mountain and that won't do at all. So I'm gonna show you the other, probably easier way of doing it. And that other way, is to actually nick the beehive itself. It also means that you've got something ready for your farm to build on. So first thing you need to do, because bees get a little bit grumpy when you take their home, it's really weird, isn't it? Put a campfire underneath the beehive. Now, theoretically, you should have some bees in that beehive. If there's no bees around, you can be fairly sure you've got bees in there. However, do wait around and you can hear them inside really quietly, and uh, that means that you're actually transporting the bees as well. Get yourself a silk touch tool. So ideally an axe, but not many people have a silk touch axe. So a silk touch pick is fine. Give that fella a bit of a bash and you get, ouch, go, don't go on the campfire. And you get the achievement total bee location. That means you're relocating the bees. Bee location, very clever. Then you can pick up your campfire as well. Obviously better if you've got an axe, but it's okay. If you've got silk touch, you actually pick the campfire up again. And you can perhaps find yourself another nest. There's another one here. Let's get rid of that flower. Pop myself a campfire down like that. Let the smoke hit that. Get myself my pickaxe. Oh look, a bee just came out. Very confused, this thing. What's going on? I'm being smoked. Hit that fella up. Oh, but because it's outside, it doesn't like you. So do be careful because those bees will chase you with their little red eyes if they're outside the hive. Great demonstration there. Didn't quite mean to do it. You can see the bees coming for me with its little red eyes. If you run away fast enough and get out their way, they will lose interest in you eventually. The footprint of just one module is eight along and six across, although you can bring up as many modules side by side as you like. And there is our eight by six platform. We've put a double chest right in the middle of the front of the six long row. That is the front of the farm. And then we've got four rows from the back, four redstone like that. Then put in a lever on that one and a lever on that one. You can turn them on now, it really does not matter, but certainly remember to turn them on before you start. Get rid of that block, could be that block if you wish, and crouch click a hopper going into the chest. And then you need to lay out some rails and powered rails. And that is the pattern of rails that you want. One powered rail on each of the redstone blocks, a row of three powered rails starting from the lever going towards the chest end on either side and the rest of them normal rails. They should form a complete loop. There is enough power in that system to allow a minecart with hopper to flow around without stopping. It's time to get dirty now. We are gonna put a six by six dirt square above the center. So leave out these ends here and here and place one, two, three, four, five, and six. Bring it all the way across and complete the square. Now. It doesn't matter if this isn't brass. However, for me, I think aesthetically, 
it just looks so much nicer if it is grass. So if you've got a load of grass blocks because you've got a silk touch shovel or something like that, feel free to make these out of uh, glass. But if you've not, all you need to do is just create yourself a little bit of a step there. Eventually, this dirt block will turn into grass. Then this dirt block will turn into grass. And then this dirt block will turn into grass. And then all the dirt blocks will turn into grass. You need to wait a little while, but it does happen. You can see it's already starting to creep across the platform. Once you've got a completely green platform, if indeed that is what you want, place a wooden block on the second block either side of this chest like that exactly like that and then go around the outside with upside down steps this is where you're going to place glass you want all of the green to be accessible so the glass has to go along the outside now if you're planning to do more than one module that's brilliant you just need to not fill in one of these sides with uh, steps because you're going to be extending it out with additional platform however now on this block that you've got here place a, a step and then an upside down step, and a step, and a step, and then just to finish it off, an upside down step like that. That gives you the necessary access to be able to get up onto the platform. Now that's quite important just to be able to make it easy to build. You don't have to keep it, it's entirely up to you. Then get yourself a single row, leaving out this block here of glass all the way around. That's going to act as your guideline for now. And then get an oak door. It doesn't have to be oak if you want. It could be another door. And put it on the inside of that block so as you've got a nice indent there. That just looks much nicer. Then come inside and get yourself two fence posts. Come to the, the back and come in one, two, three. And on that third one, in the middle two, place two fence posts. That is where we're going to be placing our hives. Now, the order in which you do the next steps depends whether or not you've got yourself a loaded bees nest or whether you're going to do beehives and lure the bees in yourself. If you're luring in the bees, you can build it up by putting the beehive on top of these posts now. However, if you've got a loaded bees nest, you want to do that last. And the reason you want to do that last is because the bees are just going to chip out and then they're not going to come back and you're going to lose them. So make sure that if you've got a ready loaded bees nest, don't do the hive on top of the post until right at the very end. Now I'm going to assume that you are doing this with a loaded bees nest. So on top of these posts, I'm just going to put a blank block on both of those posts like that. This is where the bees nest will eventually go. And I've used wooden planks because it looks a little bit like the bees nest. Now you're going to need to get yourself up. So if you want to use um, scaffolding for this, this absolutely makes sense to do so. Now you're going to want to be pointing a dispenser directly into these bees nests so what you want to be able to do that so literally pointing it like up that way so you need to come up on top and get yourself some temporary blocks get rid of those temporary blocks get a dispenser and facing downwards into those two temporary blocks so when you re get rid of those you can see the opening is not on top and then on top of those you want to put a hopper there and a hopper there. They're going to feed these dispensers from the outside so you don't have to come back in. That's really quite important. So the next thing we're going to do is place some observers looking into these beehives. What the observers will do, they'll notice when the beehive changes state, i.e. becomes filled with honey, and it will basically set out a little redstone fart that will allow it to know to dispense the necessaries into the hive. So click into the hive with two observers so the little redstone bum is pointing outwards really quite important that it's pointing outwards then place a block that is conductive i'm just using oak because it's consistent with the rest of it on top of that right now this bit is quite important because if you put four bits of redstone like that that's not going to activate those hoppers particularly effectively so take out one of the bits of redstone on top of one of the observers and place a repeater there that will mean that either of those observers firing will shoot the, a signal backwards and fire both of the dispensers. It's just a fairly efficient way of doing it. The next thing you want to do is build up the rest of the glass wall. Now again, this doesn't have to be glass, but why would you not do it in glass? Surely you want to see the bees flying around and doing their business, don't you? So pull glass all the way around, make sure you put it over the door until you are level with the hoppers. And then once you're level with the hoppers, build yourself a ceiling that comes across directly flat with these hoppers. I'll be back when I've done that. Once you've got your glass cage, take out the two glass blocks 
that are above the repeater and the redstone there. And at the bottom of the hopper, so you need to press shift click, put in two trap doors. Now, these aren't essential, but what it will do is when you flap them up manually, you can have access to those two dispensers. I'll say why that could be potentially important a little bit later. Now, you could do it at the top, but what I found is if they're at the bottom, then bees don't tend to get stuck on top of your redstone mechanism. But if you put them on the top, bees sometimes go a little bit spazzy and end up stuck on top of your repeater and don't come off. So that's just my experience. You may find it's okay. Now you're on top of it, get yourself two chests and shift click chests on top of the hoppers. You don't want them to join up to become a double chest. You want two individual chests. Now this system is designed to do both honey bottles and honeycomb. Now you could change that by doing two honeycombs or two honey bottles if you like, it's entirely up to you. But what you do is in one of them, so I'm gonna do one of each, in one of them you can put a load of um, shears and that will do you some honeycomb. And those shears will then flow through into that dispenser through the hopper and they'll stay there until they're ready. And in this one, we're gonna do honey bottles. Now it's really important that you make sure that dispenser is full of honey bottles, full stacks of honey bottles. I'll explain why that is important in a moment too. Your farm is very, very nearly ready now, but you're gonna need some flowers. Otherwise those bees are not gonna get those spotty bums. And as a result, they're not gonna get any pollen and you're not gonna get any honey. So if there aren't that many flowers around, if you're not in a flower biome, bow this, I mean, this is mental, I've got loads of flowers. You can, of course, bone mill the ground and that will give you flowers every now and again. Look, so let, I've got a little red poppy there. If I just keep going, I get more flowers. Now you're looking at single height flowers. So tulips, little white flowers, you know, dandelions, poppies, that kind of thing is what you're after. And you're gonna need about a dozen of those. I've got my flowers laid around. You can see I've put loads of flowers. I've just used red and yellow flowers. It just looks nice. It's entirely up to you what you use. But you might need a few dandelions very shortly anyway. Now, this is where we're gonna be taking out these wooden blocks. So if I just take these blocks out now, we don't need those. You'll notice that we get some bottles dispensed and that is part of the issue. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, get yourself the two bees nests that you gathered earlier if this is the stage in which you're gonna do it, that are loaded with bees, and place them in front of the observers. One there, and one there. So those will, you can see the bees are coming out and they've already got honey in, which is absolutely mental. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Now you can start to breed these bees up. You want, for two, between six and eight bees. So just breed the bees so as you get between six and eight bees. And once you're there, your farm is just absolutely ready to roll. And I really do mean roll. Take out this little notch there and pop yourself your minecart with hopper on that and then give it a little push. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes, but get yourself up there and give it a little push. And that will be rolling on there forever and ever. So just put that um, upside down, step back. You can see that's rolling backwards and forwards. The reason we've got the... Um, the notch is going out past the edge is because sometimes minecarts with hoppers when they're on a turn don't pick up stuff when they're right at the edge of a block so it just makes it more efficient in case you get anything just stuck right at the edge now we mentioned before about why it's important to have those bottles completely full the reason why is because when bees come out of the hive, that actually counts as a block state and it will eject some bottles. You saw one there just popped out. What's gonna happen now is that minecart with hopper is gonna collect up that bottle for you and as a result of it collecting up that bottle, you can get it back in the large chest so you don't lose it. You can then put it straight back in the dispenser as you wish. Now, if that dispenser is completely full of glass bottles, then it can't shoot out and then suck back in a honey bottle. If it's only got a few bottles in there, actually what it'll do is it'll shoot the bottle out, suck it full of honey and then bring it back into the dispenser and it won't ever get collected in this chest. However, if it is full of glass bottles, there's no room for it. So it spits it out onto the floor and the minecart with hopper will pick it up. Similarly, with this dispenser, the shears will snip out that honeycomb, spit them out onto the floor and the minecart with hopper will pick them up. Really, really very simple. I've added four posts across the corners simply because it was bothering me that it didn't look like it was properly gravity supported. And the only thing that was touching this top bit was these stairs and that wasn't gonna do. So we've got that now, that is a finished build. We're gonna go AFK just for a little bit of time and see how much honey and honey bottleage we can actually get. 
So this farm's been running for just under an hour, about 55 minutes. So I thought I'd come in and see what happened after that amount of time. So in the chest we've got, right, so we've got 15 honey bottles, 36 honeycombs, and very nearly two stacks of empty glass bottles. Now I did say to you that you're gonna spit out glass bottles quite a lot as a result of the updates of the bees coming in and out of the hive. And that's just the way it is. All you need to do is come back up to the top, pop the glass bottles back in, and you are good to go. They are plenty, the more glass bottles you put in there, the less time you have to spend going back and replenishing it. This farm is really easy to expand. You don't even have to worry about the bees in the first module. You can build the second module on the left hand side or the right hand side of it without disturbing the first module completely. And then once you're done building the second module, you can come inside and you can break open the first module like this and create just one single farm that is double the size. Farms are really easy to make as you can see it takes very little time whatsoever not that many resources and you're going to get so much honey you're not going to know what to do with it after a little while. If you have enjoyed this video please do remember to slap that like button it'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making them. Also if you've not done it already please do hit that subscribe button it'd be great to see you in my sub club I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.